be great if one could make a video on Ben 10's love interest. It's like I said, no big. <sighs> what time? Awesome! You're a stand-up guy, Bats. Don't ever let them call you a crazed loner. Looks like it's time for another upload. It might seem strange that I'm only doing this now, but you know how the old saying goes. I have terrible time management skills. I figured given that it's February, now would be the best time to make good on one of my most requested videos. That's right, it's the Ben 10 love interest video. Before I get into my own handmade shipping war, I thought I would lay out two ground rules. The first is that I'm not going to be covering girls whose relationship with Ben has questionable context. This could range from the history they have being, uncertain given that they're based off of a movie with dubious canonicity, and then there's- So when I cut my hand opening the space pod- It sampled your DNA, randomized it, and created Eunice. We in here. <sighs> here you go. The second stipulation is that I will, mostly, cover four episodes for each respective candidate. This handicap is to prevent any character from taking the lead purely based off of their screen time, or looking worse because of how many episodes they're in. With those out of the way we can go over the five categories for the video. Introduction episode, dynamic with Ben, interaction with other characters, what they add to the series, and well, we'll get to that later on. Now that all the criteria is covered, let's move on to the main event. You're a terrible boyfriend. <laughs> you guys stop. What? Ben Tennyson is just having girl problems. Starting with Julie, the way they go about setting up a date is believable enough. And we have a surprising bit of continuity as Ben once again is nervous about making the first move with a girl he likes. Something that started with classic and goes all the way up to Omniverse. Thanks to the major conflict of the episode, we don't get to learn much about Julie, but given the nature of this show, focusing more on alien intrigue and action does make sense. What really stands out to me are four points. The fact that Ben didn't transform sooner to take care of ship, or that Julie didn't hear any of the destruction ship caused in a nearly empty pier, but those really are just oddities that don't detract from the episode or could be explained. The other two points do actually affect the quality of the episode. The first is that Julie borders on being an overly agreeable love interest. The basic issue when a character fits the term is that it's hard to get a read on their personality when they seem unfazed by their experiences, yet also aren't depicted as someone who likes hiding their emotions. I'll go into more detail about why character fitting that description can be an issue in a video way down the line. As for Julie, she avoids it by at least being reasonably scared when she's put in danger, and even pushes Ben to be a bit more empathetic. The second issue I have is that, I don't really think you need an episode dedicated to Ben getting a girlfriend. Sure that can happen in an episode, but as a B plot to something more impactful for the overall show. The episode does introduce Ship and how he could potentially be helpful later on, but even that clearly is just there to add conflict to the date itself. There are sweet moments and it is a good start to a relationship, but it's not really interesting as an episode by itself. So 6 out of 8. Oh yeah I forgot to explain why my rating only goes to 8. Moving on to the two-time formerly betrothed, Luma's first episode is pretty fun. We get to see some staples in terms of Ben 10 locations, get new interactions outside of just Luma herself, and while the fights are arguably not as visually impressive as Ben's playtime with Ship, the hits and sense of danger have a stronger presence. Really my only two issues are Gwen seeing this. <laughs> and following it by She's saying this. She's probably off somewhere right now crying her eyes out. As well as Ben treating Kevin like a kid brother he needs to protect, as opposed to his former teammate who can take care of himself, and should be more forthcoming with why Ben needs to hide him. With all the praise I've been giving so far, I have to also acknowledge that any relationship with Ben only starts in the last 1 minute and 30 seconds of the episode. Normally that type of joke wouldn't be a problem, but when talking about the relationship between these girls and Ben, that does impact the rating. So 5 out of 8. Now time to actually get into the mostly aspect of the episode count I'm using. Altea technically initially appears in Alien Force Season 1, but her appearance and role in Omniverse is so different that it almost feels like judging two characters. For the former she spends most of the episode as a would-be damsel Ben doesn't talk to, and once her true colors are shown they exchange two sentences at the very end. For the second appearance she's grown quite a bit, and has- I don't know what the hell you feed her, but he is- she Too damn big! And has taken on the role as her father's head general. To be honest I never really cared for the incursions. Feeling like they lack the overwhelming power or intelligence to be threatening conquerors, so this episode was a uphill battle for me. Ignoring that, any actual sign of romance between the two only happens near the end of her third to last prominent appearance, and it's quickly shot down on Ben's end. So I hope I'm not burning too many bridges when I give her a 3 out of 8. 
Next is Kai who has a similar situation in terms of proper introduction and reintroduction. In classic she was shown as Ben's first crush who he hoped to impress, but was set back slightly by an otherworldly wolf creature stealing satellites. She doesn't get to interact with Ben that much in the episode, and that's fine given what this episode is about both plot-wise, and how she responds to Ben's feelings. In regards to the plot, it unfortunately has the exact opposite effect that Mysteries desired. Where in re-watching it causes scenes to make less sense than they did during the initial viewing. Thankfully the episode doesn't solely rely on Mystery and still has cool moments and enjoyable interactions outside of the wolf itself. As for Kai, she makes it clear she really only is into Ben when he's in his wolf form. Now I know what you're thinking, but stop it and pay attention to the story, sickos. Not a great moment for him, but does give a nice lesson that could be applied in multiple ways. On its own this episode would earn a 6 out of 8, but then there's her omniverse reintroduction. This episode starts with Kai's grandfather leading her towards the apparently real laboratory of Dr. Jekyll. Why is he out of retirement and taking his granddaughter with him? Yes a later episode does give explanation, but even that leaves some questions. Ignoring that, her grandfather is kidnapped by a small holdover from the Forever Knights, who are looking to use his knowledge to regain some influence and power they once had. She calls Ben for help, and cue the banter. What's odd in this episode is that Kai goes back and forth between the normal bickering her and Ben will settle into, and seemingly actively flirting with Ben. Maybe the writers didn't know how they wanted their relationship to play out, or even that this episode is a Frankenstrike of two very different early drafts, but the behind-the-scenes whys aren't important for this discussion. I think it's an interesting idea to have what was a serious faction for Ben in the past, turn into the ragtag rejects who serve as a minor annoyance for him. It doesn't go too much further than an idea thanks to Ben's bickering with Kai being such a distraction from the plot that even the characters start calling it out. Now obviously that is the joke, but when dealing with a faction that's been around since the first series and has a noticeable presence since then, it's pretty fair to prefer them getting focuses over someone who's only officially appeared in one prior episode. With the conflicting ideas, in and outside of the relationship, Kai is getting a 4 out of 8. Finally there's Esther, who is a change of pace as directly showing interest in Ben before he even attempts to get her attention. That ties into her conflicted feelings as she helps her people with a problem, that is a bit nuanced than how antagonistic species in this show normally behave, while she still clearly is against her people's extreme methods. What really distracts from this conflict is the pace of the episode, as it spends half of its runtime leaving Esther's morality ambiguous, only to immediately show she's a good person once her job is done. So when Rook starts to question her motives, the end result is a short-lived conflict that gives an answer the audience already knew. It probably would have improved the episode had they either made her intentions clear earlier, giving more room for her relationship with Ben as well as making her people's true goal hit harder thanks to the added time she would receive, or cut down on her casually bonding with Ben and Rook and have her allegiance be questioned up until the end. Giving a stronger sense of suspense as we're not sure what move she'll make. Ultimately the episode is still fine as it is, and they do leave the door open for whether or not Ben will pursue a relationship with her, allowing the relationship to not feel tied down to any one formulaic routine between the two of them. This gets her a 6 out of 8. Now moving on to... Julie actually appeared in the first episode of Alien Force, and Atea came back in an earlier episode of Omniverse, you also incorrectly. Uh, Esther, look over there! Now, moving on to how the girls generally interact with Ben. For Julie this comes down to a simple pattern. Julie is interested in something. Ben shows how much he cares by making it clear he doesn't want to be involved. Julie is sad that Ben feels that way, and after the end of the episode action scene Ben promises to do better. Or they both realize the situation was more complicated than they thought and try to be more understanding of each other's views. The most bizarre version of the former is Julie's second major appearance. Where not only does the episode have the second most responsible version of Ben be disinterested in keeping tabs on a living weapon, but by the end of it his concerns about ship's capacity for destruction and Julie being in over her head are completely dismissed. You think this would be the episode where both of them acknowledge they were being too stubborn for their own good, but I guess the writers may as well ease people into the tedium that is their fights. Even if they felt like Ben's indifference towards Julie's general interest was a constant flaw they didn't want him to correct, it would have still been in their best interest to have episodes that has their relationship as a major focus have a different internal conflict, or just have the conflict be external. Watching episodes focused on their relationship just becomes a chore when you can predict what their conflict will be like. <gasps> You'll be hurting my feelings. I'm sorry. Lastly, I'm not sorry. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. 
that's not a feeling that should be evoked when dealing with a romance that had an entire episode dedicated to it, so Jewel gets a 4 out of 8. With Luma and Ben, the former takes an extreme and destructive action, Ben is exasperated, and she laughs it off showing him affection while going back to what she was doing. Which makes me wonder if Yuri Lohenthal was getting some serious deja vu recording for these episodes. It's an enjoyable gag that is mostly supported by Ben being incredibly powerful, so you never get the sense she could ever fully take advantage of Ben. Still, the joke has a short shelf life, with them basically needing Luma to go against her code of ethics just to get her involved in more comedic romance episodes. This puts her at a 4 out of 8.